for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For yourself, best gift divine, to the world so freely give. Agent of God's grand design, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Amen. Welcome to this Mass. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our gathering song is number 315, All Are Welcome. Number 315. Please stand. And indeed, friends, welcome to this celebration as God himself invites us to share in this great feast of his word and sacrament. To all of you who are here, those in our gathering area as well, those separated by a kind of wall, we are one family together. And so in that spirit, let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us prepare our hearts then to, for these, to celebrate these sacred mysteries as now we acknowledge our sin. I confess to Almighty God, to you. Pray for me, Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by participating and share in showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, The Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right 
and just. He shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first son and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes, are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe in him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, we continue our parables as we have the last several Sundays, these parables of divine mercy, divine forgiveness. And the parable begins today. A man had two sons. And right now you might be thinking, oh boy, they can't possibly be talking about my perfect boys (laughs) or my perfect daughters. You must be talking about somebody else's rebellious children. Well, in reality, when we hear that phrase, a man had two sons, we can expect, as in all the parables of Jesus, some moment of high drama. And the parable today, which is right to the point, in fact, smack between the eyes, as all the parables are, because they end with a twist. They end with some sudden turn of events, some unexpected behavior that was never anticipated, or in some cases, it was truly shocking. Think of Jesus' other parable about two sons, the story of the prodigal son. The one son, in fact, Jesus begins a parable the same way. A a man had two sons. One son came to him and asked for the inheritance early, and the other son stayed behind. Well, neither boy was good, and in the parable today, neither son is perfect. They're both flawed in their own way. And so today's parable is best understood, I think, in the context of where Jesus addressed it and to whom he addressed this parable. But many of these parables, though they may have been addressed to a specific person or group of people at that moment, the lessons of them go far beyond just that particular audience. And so this parable is set at a moment when the Pharisees and Sadducees come to Jesus. And they challenge him, basically saying to him, who do you think you are? Who gives you the authority 
to come into this temple and overturn those changers, spill coins and create a ruckus and a riot, and then you have the audacity to sit here, take a corner of the temple and begin to teach like some authority in this temple. Who gave you that authority? It probably was even, of course, stronger than that. And that's the context of this parable. It follows immediately on those events. And so Jesus, as always, turns it back. And he tells him a story, this parable. A man had two sons. It's a simple story. And the lesson is pretty clear. A man had two sons. He came to both sons. And he asked one to go out and work in his vineyard. Now remember last Sunday's parable was also about a vineyard. A vineyard in which workers went. And at the end of the day, those who worked the last hour, the five o'clock hour, they all got paid the same. It was not about economy or an HR department. or uh, It was about God's incredible generosity. That no matter when we come, even at the 11th hour, Everybody gets the same genera, generosity and fairness from God. Today's parable holds a little bit of that, but in a more personal kind of way, a sharper tone. So the man had two sons. One son said to his father, No, I will not. Now, in ancient times, in the times of Jesus, and I believe still today, one of the greatest virtues that is honored is honor. The parable of the prodigal son is so shocking because that one son had the audacity, the insult to his father to ask for his inheritance before the time of his death. No son would ever do that and shame their father like that. So the son momentarily does the same thing. No, I'm not going. The other son said, yes, I will. The son who said yes, at least initially, honored his father by not embarrassing him, not shaming him. His father asked him to do something, and so he said, yes, I will do what you ask. Now, he never went, and the first one who said no re rethought his decision and reversed, and then eventually went to work in the vineyard. So Jesus said, which one did, did his father's will? Well, obviously the first one. Did what his finally did what his father wanted him to do. And the other son uh, did not dishonor his father, which is perhaps more important than whether he ever went or, or, or not. But then he turns it. And this is where even ourselves can come in. He turns the parable. And he said, you heard the preaching of John the Baptist, you Pharisees who are accusing me. You heard the preaching of John the Baptist, and I preach in the same kind of spirit, the same message, the same fire. You heard that message of John the Baptist, and you stood there watching, and you saw who was coming to be baptized. You saw who was coming to, to answer that call to repentance. Even those you point fingers at, those tax collectors and those prostitutes, the greatest sinners those who live shameful, scandalous lives, even they heard the message of John the Baptist and reversed their no to God and then finally made it a yes. They turned themselves around and they embraced the message of John. Now you come to me and you hear me saying the same. You were not moved by that. And you see the people coming to me and you see or at least hear these miracles and you see the effect and you're still not moved. So those tax collectors and prostitutes will enter the kingdom of heaven before you who think that you're so self-righteous and perfect as the leaders of the people. It's a tough one. And Jesus would have said it right between the eyes, gave it back to them in a way that was certainly justified. There's a certain kind of level of anger that is sometimes justified anger, righteous anger in the face of great injustice. And that's where Jesus is at here. But notice what he says. He doesn't say the tax collectors and prostitutes will 
enter the kingdom of heaven instead of you. He says before you. So the door is still open. Even to them, the door is still open. You can still say yes. You can still reconsider your no. And now you can say yes. And if you say yes, you will be welcomed into the kingdom just as they were. Very much like last Sunday's parable, a similar kind of thing, theme of this mercy of God that is more concerned about our present life than he is about our past. None of us should be labeled for what we did 30 or 40 years ago for the mistakes and the misjudgments and the impulsiveness that we might have had in our past. It's more important where we are today and how much of that has caused us to reverse our lives, to embrace this whole message of conversion, to turn our lives around and come back to a God who embraces us with mercy and abundance and generosity. This is good news. This is what the good news of the gospel means. Because over and over again, it is about this forgiveness. It's about this never-ending call to conversion. All of us in our lives. God always says yes to humanity. And so the greatest yes that God ever said, of course, was sending his own son among us. We did not ask God to send his son. We never asked. We pleaded for a savior, but we had no particular idea what that would mean. It took many forms over the centuries of Jewish history. But God came, inserted himself into human history in the most silent, ordinary kind of way as a child, as a baby. And he became our savior. Time and time again, that message, that theme of God reaching out, God inviting, God offering us a time to reconsider and to now come back to him is a constant theme of our gospel. And it's all about what Jesus did. His death on the cross, his resurrection, and every time we celebrate the Holy Mass, and more than anything else, every time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. That is his gift to us. Jesus gave us himself in the memorial of the supper that we will never forget the yes that God said to humanity. Let's come back to the Lord if we need to, even if it's a small part of our life or a larger part. It doesn't matter when, it only matters if we do. Together, my friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, who are four ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. Man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the bush Pilate, and by death and was buried, he rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to charge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who sees from the Father and the Son, and the Lord and glorified, who has spoke through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the rest.
resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Inspired by our gospel, then let us bring our needs now to the Lord. For the grace of conversion, that God will help all who have made poor or destructive choices to change course and follow Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. For all priests who are ordained to serve our church, and for Father Tim, in his ministry to the people of Queen of Peace, that we may affirm, support, and celebrate his gift of service to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are suffering from the aftermath of hurricanes or wildfires, that God will protect them from further harm, help them to connect with family and friends, and fill their hearts with courage. We pray to the Lord. For all who are ill and for those who have died this week. We pray to the Lord. Now let us add our own intentions in silent prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we hear your call, inviting us always to trust in your presence and mercy as you reach out to us. Hear the prayers we bring now in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 353, Vine and Branches, number 353. So let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Queen of Peace, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, let us, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You're welcome to bow to one another as a sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of our world. How blessed are we who are brought to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not
Prayer for Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
And our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl all the world, seeking the room of souls. Amen. And let us pray. May the heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us to mind and, and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, great to see uh, so many of you coming back. Every Mass this weekend is full, both here and in the gathering area, so that's a, that's a happy problem to finally have once again. And uh, we're to, we'll work that out as best. We'll, um, Ethan is going to say a few words about that in just a moment. Just remind you of a few things uh, coming up next Saturday, October 3rd, at, um, uh, centered at St. Edward's Church, St. Kaiser, Archbishop Sample will be there as well for the Rosary Bowl, the annual Rosary Bowl. But it's going to be uh, broadcast here at Queen of Peace too, and so you don't need it. They're pretty full, I think, at as many as they are able to take. But we'll be broadcasting it in the gathering area starting this coming Saturday morning. I believe it's Mass at 8.30 with the Archbishop, and then followed by the Rosary and the Speaker and all of that. So... If you want to come participate, all you need to do is come and come here. You can sign up online through the parish website in order to do that in the road, in the gathering area, eight th starting at 8.30 with Mass at um, this uh, coming Saturday. Of course, uh, uh, this is the next two Mondays, Monday evening and Tuesday evening at 6.30. Each evening is the movie on Fatima. And so, again, it's sold out. There are two uh, matinees. One, I think, is, uh, is still available, the 1 p.m., on Saturday, if you if you can come between one and three on Saturday, or uh, rather Tuesday, uh, is when that will be, and uh, to be a part of that if you would like to. Again, signing up online, you can you can check uh, check there as well. Um, the other announcements uh, tomorrow morning are, are those watching at home. Tomorrow's today. Uh, after the 8:30 mass um, is the uh, WCFF, and we're showing now the new series. Uh, with Bishop Barron on conversion, very appropriate to the gospel uh, today, about a story about coming no matter at what hour to receive the Lord's blessings, about conversion. It's a series about five, it's five or six in a series of some uh, question and answer period too, so that will be nice uh, during the, uh, between the masses on, on uh, Sunday mornings, uh, beginning with that series uh, starting uh, this Sunday, of course, after mass. And as I said, Ethan, uh, in your bulletin is a nice insert there, kind of explaining because we are, are having pretty much a full attendance for each Mass, uh, and I know there's more folks that would like to come. Uh, we're, we had a good discussion at our staff meeting about trying to open, find a third space that we can open up safely. We're not, we're thinking possibly the gym, but we have to develop some way of getting the picture in there and the sound. So... At any rate, um, there's a nice answer here that kind of explaining the procedure uh, where we are now. So Ethan would like to explain that. Yeah, thank you, Father Tim. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, to use uh, coronavirus language, our, model, our current modeling suggests that we're seeing an uptick in the number of people, prisoners that want to attend mass, and that's a great thing. Uh, and our projections suggest that that will continue. Um, so uh, just a couple of things. Kind of from the very beginning when we f first started opening public masses, we thought based on initial survey that uh, prisoners could reasonably expect to attend mass maybe every other week. During the summer, it seemed almost weekly because we were at a higher phase two capacity and lower uh, prisoner interest, and now it's switched. So we have uh, a lower phase two capacity, 100 in the church, and then a little less in the gathering area, and more people wanting to come. So uh, with that, we think you can still reasonably expect to attend about every other week. One suggestion of doing that 
is that if you're in person attending mass, wait till Friday to sign up uh, to see if there's more spaces. If you're watching from home right now, uh, since you're not here, you can sign up immediately for the following Sunday. So it kind of goes back and forth. Uh, and then final, finally, um, since we are at full capacity, we just want to reiterate the importance of signing up ahead of time, whether through calling or through Eventbrite. Again, during the summer, it was a little easier for, to have walk-ins because we had the space for it. But we really want to emphasize that uh, signing up is the best way and really the preferred way. Uh, so that's all there as a reminder in the bulletin. So thanks for listening. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and announce the gospel of the Lord.